Meridian Frost made a video critical of the Occupy Wall Street movement. Then later, Grappling Ignorance made a video with a similar subject. Meridian Frost I rarely pay attention to. He makes good points sometimes, but frequently he is too arrogant and tends to generalize folks he disagrees with. He doesn't do it to anywhere near the extent of someone like Pat Condell or Thunderfoot, but he does kind of do that a bit. Grappling ignorance I usually agree with the vast majority of the time. He does do those sorts of videos I call atheist populism sometimes, which I think are silly, but that's kind of a nitpick, really. In fact, I would actually recommend watching some of his stuff if you haven't already, but I digress. The video Grappling Ignorance did was, in a way, Meridian Frost apologetics, so to speak. They both made the same points. Grappling Ignorance just did it in a more concise way without the condescension that was in the Meridian Frost video. Well, I really take issue with a couple of points in their videos. One point they both make was that the Occupy movement is pointless or invalid in some way, because anyone making over 34000 a year is in the 1% of the world as a whole. There were a lot of comparisons made to the poor in other countries and how much worse off they are. Meridian Frost went so far as to say that as skeptics, we should see this problem. <laughs> oh, how ironic and amusing. Because this whole train of thought just doesn't logically follow. It is a major argument in both videos, and a major argument of the right-wing critics of the movement, too. And it's nonsense. Just because we are focusing on income disparity in the country does not mean we can't, at the same time, care about exploitation in other countries. It's also an entirely separate context. The entire basis of the movement is aimed at domestic policy of the U.S. government, which doesn't include other countries. I would also add that supporters of this Occupy movement tend to be against the sort of colonialism, which is the only part the U.S. plays in the cause of the aforementioned plight of the poor in foreign countries. I dare say changes to both the economic and militaristic parts of this would be much more likely to be realized after the domestic disparity is resolved. Just to provide more examples of my main point, let me apply it to other arguments of the same type. People will often object to charities about animals or laws about things like dog fights and puppy mills by saying there are lots of people in need and children being abused. I think, put that way, even Meridian Frost and Grappling Ignorance should be able to see that these things are not mutually exclusive, just like their point about the world poor versus American poor. Circumcision debates get this same load of bullshit hurled about, too. People will always bring up female circumcision, as if being against the male version somehow makes you less against that. It's a non sequitur, really. You also have to wonder what they want people to do when they make that argument. Should we stop protesting what goes on in this country until everyone in the world is up to the standards of our typical poor people? I don't see how that is going to help. Grappling Ignorance went on to make a false comparison where he states that middle to lower middle class people wouldn't want to give up this luxury or that for the very poor. As if the upper middle class to moderately wealthy paying a little more tax is going to call for any real sacrifice. Not to mention, most of it is aimed at the very top who have so much money they have nothing to do with it but make speculative investments. Not only are these just waste, but this sort of speculation leads to the boom and bust economic cycles that cause so much misery among the poor. They both complain about the Occupy movement being very nebulous with their goals, or that some of its members have very unrealistic ideas. In fact, I myself 
would even go so far as to say that some of the people in it are total morons. So what? So fucking what? Does this somehow invalidate the movement as a whole? Does it really matter what the different people in the movement want to do? I say no to all. It can't invalidate the movement because it doesn't logically follow that the whole can be equated with some of its parts. It also doesn't matter what they want because it's all about what it is doing. What it has done and what it continues to do is rally all factions of the left and bring attention to the economic state of the country. And that's all it really needs to do. That's why every left-wing cause out there seems tacked on to it, because it's kind of a uniting factor. I have my disagreements with the more hippy-dippy idiot side of the left, but they are right in regard to what this movement is actually doing. I can agree with them on this, and still call them out on their conspiracy theories about GMO and their continual use of the naturalistic fallacy. As I alluded a moment ago, I do agree with some of the points made in both videos, particularly about certain segments of the Occupy movement. So, while I do agree with much of the criticism both these YouTubers got, I can't agree with all of it. I think anything equating them with the right is unfair and disproved by other things both of them have said. I think the criticism where it seems to be assumed that they are at odds with a lot of liberal causes is also unfair and contradicted by statements towards the end of each video. A comment Grappling Ignorance made kind of underlined the problem here. He basically asked, is the problem people trying to make as much money as they can, or is it just capitalism? Well. Rigged markets aren't exactly free, and socializing the risk of the wealthy investors and business owners isn't exactly capitalism. We also must consider the redistribution of wealth on the labor side, where this resource is kept artificially low by what kind of amounts to price fixing. So I find the entire paradigm of all this to be complete and total bullshit. 